Yeah, my name is Daniel Wajoi, the chairman of the CCK. I'm really delighted to be before you at this uh, opportune time, and I'd like to also to take uh, this uh, moment to really welcome you. I know that uh, indeed it has taken sacrifice even for you to be here. You have left your busy schedules, and just to come to Nakuru, many of people who have been traveled either outside the country or even other parts of the country. Why? It's because of the love and the passion and also because of what we believe and our soul that indeed it is possible to actually get to our goal or universal access to clean cooking. I'm really delighted when I think about this. This is something that uh, we have been talking for many years, but I can see that the dream is so near than it was before. However, there are a number of things definitely for us to be able to really get there that uh, it's not a single institution that can really be able to handle this, but together we can be able to really make it. Without uh, much undo, I would also like to take this opportunity to also recognize the various institutions that have actually made this Clean Cooking Week a success. I'd like to take uh, this uh, moment and recognize the government of Japan the UNDP, the Ministry of Energy and Petroleum, the county government of Nakuru, which actually has hosted us, GIZ, the Green Cooking Alliance, the Access, also Kenya Power and Lighting, Bank Manufacturing, Center Project, and also the Mama Green Goals. And above all, the Clean Cooking uh, Planning Committee that was working relentlessly to ensure that what we have today is actually the way it is. Without them, it will not really have been uh, possible. Again, it, it gives me joy uh, that uh, we can get gathered in a place like this one to really talk about clean cooking. About 10 years ago, it was very difficult to really bring a crowd and bring an agenda of clean cooking. Clean cooking used to be considered just a piece of, of the household or a woman issue. But I believe and I have seen the evidence transitioning and changing the narrative that it is no longer treated so. Today it is a development agenda. We cannot talk about development without talking about clean cooking. Why, as Ijinia Kiva has mentioned, it impacts on our lives. It impacts on the environment. It impacts on our health. It impacts even us on our social economic well-being. Therefore, it is part and parcel of sustainable development that we cannot really be able to avoid. As I have mentioned, I'm really delighted about the theme. I don't know whether you have really recognized our theme. And this theme was not coined out of the blues. It was it took time to actually come up with it. And it brings the questions and the memories of where we are coming from. Uh, we have gotten to a point that uh, we no longer now talk about the problem because we already know it. We know about the number of deaths that we are actually uh, having every other year, over 20,000 and above. We know what actually the traditional cooking practices is causing to our environment and even to the forest. We know the kind of emissions that are out there. We know about the health impact. And that's why now we are no longer talking about the problem, but we're going to talk about the solution. How do we march forward toward the universal access to clean cooking solutions? We gave ourselves a target as a country that by the year 2028, we would really like to have everyone having an access to a clean cooking solution. There are a number of things that have to be undertaken, and also. Business as usual is no longer going to work. We have to really think outside the box for us to really be able to get there. And that's why you find that uh, with our theme, talk about investment, innovation, involve, and then transformation. What does that really mean? As you are aware, that clean cooking for a long time has been underfunded in comparative to electricity. And it is high time that we need to think outside the box. What must we do 
for us to be able to meet the needs of clean cooking access to about 8.3 million households who do not have access to clean cooking solutions. And it's a target that we are aiming to achieve within less than five years. It means that uh, the traditional way of doing things must change. And therefore, it is a call to every one of us that we really need to think differently, come up with different mechanisms, innovations in terms of how we can be able to really achieve. And I believe that uh, this is not alone we are just uh, leaving to the Minister of Energy or to the government, but all of us as stakeholders, the private sector, we would really like to see you more and more. The DFI, the development organizations, I'm usually challenged by an example from DRC, that is, um, there is a part called Winter Fund. It was championed by the president of uh, DRC. And then uh, he did put a seed money of about 5 million US dollars. Today, the fund has really grown to about 75 million dollars. I'm looking forward to something of that nature. So how do we ensure that no one is being left behind? We do have the communities who don't have the capacity to purchase this solution. They have been relying on uh, free fuels, right? Collected firewood. How do we ensure that we don't leave them behind? We must evolve. It is high time that we really need to think about what we call participatory enterprise, that no man gonna be left behind. I would like to mention that uh, for us to be able to really achieve the goal that we have envisioned, and that it is not gonna be a fight dream. Let us think about the scale. Let us think about the speed. Let us think about more of actions than talks. That we will be able to really oversee the strategy on clean cooking that is under development, so that we can be able to really achieve the goal that we have set by ourselves. And again, to finalize my remarks, that it is time for action, time for scale and impact. Triple bottom, we can only achieve it if we walk this journey together. Thank you very much.